Today we're going to be talking about volcano plots. And if you're not familiar with this type of graph, you might think it has something to do with, well, a volcano. Uh, in fact, the graph that we're going to create today, that I'm showing here, uh, is inspired certainly by volcanoes and has a look of an exploding volcano. But this is something that is used widely in bioinformatics in order to understand uh, what's happening in experiments where genes are being impacted and whether they're upregulated or downregulated. So the graph that you see here, all the points that are highlighted in red represent genes that have been upregulated, and the blue are genes that have been downregulated. So this is our topic for today. I'm going to show you how to create a volcano plot in Datagraph. It is not hard at all to do, and we'll go through this step by step. So uh, get Datagraph out and follow along with me. Let's get started. The data that we're going to use for this demo comes from an online repository. And I wanted to just show you a little bit about how I found this data. Actually, I came across this article for an online tool that you can also use for creating volcano plots. This is, in fact, a nice article for describing a little bit more of the background of the plots and what they mean. Uh, I'm not a biologist, so this was helpful for me, actually, in learning more about volcano plots. And if you go to this article, and go to the figures. I'll, of course, have a link in the description of the video. Uh, you'll see figure two is the one that we're going to use for our demo. This is the data that we're going to use. Here they show the same data, just displayed differently, depending on if you're interested in just the upregulated genes or looking at both. Uh, in any case, there's a hyperlink within the article itself that will bring you to their online tool. The tool shows the graph here. There's a bunch of different sliders and options that you have. Uh, and this, again, this was helpful for me to think about, okay, what, what should I do within data graph. But if you go over to the data section, this is where you can get the link to the actual CSV file. So here's the URL link. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then go, did I do that right? Let <laughs> me triple check that I copied this and now go into data graph. And this is going to use this linking mechanism that I did a video on uh, last month or so. So if you go over to the other menu and say link to URL file, that will add this group that I can then paste the URL into. Hit enter. It will take a moment to load what available columns we have, but you can see them here. If you want to just see all the data, you can use the gear menu and say create missing columns. So here's all the data. This again, this is coming from this online source. Uh, the first column, fast to headers. In fact, I don't exactly know exactly what that means. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that one. You can click on any of these objects and hit the delete key if you, if you don't want them anymore. Again, not deleting the data, just the link to the data. But this is what we need, the gene names, the p-value, and the difference column. Uh, these data are already log adjusted in the way that we need them, so we don't need to do any log transformation. But I will put the p-value, uh, move that column to the end because that is my Y column, so I, uh, it's helpful in data graph to have the X come just to the left of the Y value. And so that's it. So here's your data, and uh, we can go ahead and just name this group, and this is what we're going to use for our volcano plot. To create the volcano plot, we're going to use the points command to make a scatter graph of this data. And a quick way to do this is to first highlight both of my columns, again, with the X on the left and the Y on the right. I'll hold the shift key in order to select both of them at the same time, and then add the points command. It will auto automatically be populated with my data. And one of the things I want you to notice right away is I have the hover turned on. So if you're not familiar with the hover, this is where I can turn it on and off over here on the toolbar. Uh, but when it, by default, when we have the hover turned on, it will show me the row number and the X and Y value. But I wanna show the gene name because that will make it uh, much more interactive and help me to explore this data. To do that, you can open up your points command and notice that there is an option for hover label currently set to automatic, but I want to change this to use the gene name. So you can use the menu or, as I like to often do, just click the header, drag, and drop it right there, and now you'll see the gene name when you hover over the points. 
Okay, that's the first thing I wanted to do here. The other thing that I recommend doing is changing the marker style to a solid marker. And I like to add a, a lighter color that has a little opacity to it. So if you go into the color tile and go all the way down to the bottom where there's the color picker, you can click a gray color and again, add a little bit of opacity here. And what that does is uh, makes the color be much darker where we have a denser accumulation of points. So I think that's kind of a nice look for this type of graph. Next, I want to draw the lines that will define the significant regions for my graph. And to do this, I'm going to use a command that you can access under the label menu. This is called the region command. In fact, this is one of these commands that we updated in Datagraph 5.2, and there's a video that goes into a lot of detail on this. But I'm going to use this functionality now that lets me define a shape around a region, and it can be used to indicate what points are in or out of that region. So it makes masking this much easier um, than it would have been before. So go ahead and add one of these region commands and uh, change the type to a rectangle. This is an area that you can drag around, but we're going to place it again at some significance level. So what I'd go ahead and do is change X to two to say 20. And that's going to define, again, this, uh, this bound on the, uh, on the left-hand side of this box, as well as the right-hand side of this box. Now, the right-hand doesn't really matter. We just want it to go well beyond the data. And in fact, when we set up this, what we'll need to do is go into the uh, detail of this command and uncheck include in range. Now the range will just be based on the actual points. Uh, so again, I can take now my Y value, also add some significance level. I'm gonna say two here, and we'll also put 20 there so that the shape is actually going well beyond the data. And I can change this if I'd like to a dash line, which again is very common with these graphs. Um, but then the other thing that I'm going to do here is again, I want an indication of which points are in or out of this region. And I can do that using uh, this relatively new functionality. This is just in Datagraph 5.2. You'll see a mask for option. And what you do is you select the actual scatter command that has this data that we want to determine whether it's in or out of the region. We'll go ahead and select that and then click the Extract button that's over here on the right-hand side. That creates a column that will give me a one or a zero, depending on whether or not that point is inside this uh, particular region. So for example, the first point here um, has, a, has a pretty high p-value and also a high difference, and it is included in this significance region. I'm going to change the name of this to up to indicate that these are the genes that are upregulated. And now I want to add a region for the downregulated genes. I can do this uh, easily by just cloning the command I've already created. So if you select the command, hold the option key, drag the command down and let it go. Now we have a second rectangle. This one is going to go from negative 20 to negative two on the X range. And the Y can be the same as for the other region. Again, I do need to open this up. It's already set up now to have a mask for that scatter graph, but I'll extract the actual column and I can type in down. Now for either of these, if I want to see just off the bat how many genes there are uh, in either category, I can click my column and hit the space bar. So I see that there's 13 that are upregulated and 46 that are downregulated. The next thing that we'll do is change the points so that they're different in both of these regions that we have created. And to do that, again, we're going to start with the points command that we've already got here that plots all the points and make a clone of this. Hold down the option key, click and drag. That makes one clone. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, well, first of all, I'm gonna change the marker so I can go ahead and do that now. 
and change this to having an outline again that's black this is sort of what I prefer but then the fill color I'm going to set this to line color one and uh, this is just overlaying now the second points command. So if I hide this, you'll see the points that are underneath this one. But I only want to draw the red points when my jeans are upregulated. So now this is where I can use as a mask. Um, go ahead and make sure you see this. Use as mask currently says draw all. But we're going to say I want to only draw the points here where up is equal to one. Now I have those points. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's option drag this one, uh, but change this to a different color. And instead of where up is equal to one, we'll change this where down is equal to one. And now we have the graph. Again, we'll turn on our hover so we can see the different gene names, uh, but you can see the uh, how the upregulated are red and the downregulated are blue. One thing I would keep in mind when you have multiple points commands is that if you want to change the size of the points, uh, it, it may be uh, kind of an automatic thing to go to the command itself to change it, but if you leave it at the word point, then that is your point variable that is set actually within the style settings. So here I can change all of the point sizes all at the same time, and it just makes it a lot easier when I want to do that. One of the nice things in the web app that I showed you earlier in the video was how there was a bunch of sliders where you could change various aspects of your volcano plot. And uh, if you're a user of Datagraph, you're probably aware that Datagraph also has built-in sliders that you can add. And that's one of the things that we're going to do now. So for example, uh, over here for our regions, you could click and drag on the range of this to change where it begins and where it ends. But if I want these to stay the same, for example, the significance level for my p-value to change at the same time for both of the up and down regions, that's where creating a slider variable is just a perfect use of that. So I'm going to go over here and let's uh, minimize those two columns, give us a little more room into the variable section. And I want you to go ahead and add a slider. So you click on this button here to add the slider. And we will call this slider X. Uh, or actually maybe we'll do Y first, <laughs> since I was just talking about the Y direction. And, uh, and we'll have this go from 0 to, say, uh, 12, for example. Um, you might want to make it a little smaller to have a little more control over it. You also could change this to an integer if you only want to change by whole numbers. We'll go ahead and leave it continuous. But what I would do is go over into my region commands. Instead of the lower bound of y being the number 2, I'm going to set it to the variable I created called y. And now if I move this, actually maybe 12 was a little too high in that direction. Let's go ahead and just change this to 5. Uh, so now I can change my significance level. And again, they're changing both at the same time. Let's go ahead and create another slider. So I'll select this, hold the Option key, click and drag. Let's call this one X. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to change the lower bound where I have X from the number two to my X variable. And again, now I can interactively change them both at the same time. My graph is looking pretty good, but I'm missing here axis labels. And I also want to show you what happens when I add a legend. So in terms of the axis labels, if you go back to the website that uh, inspired this example where we got the data from, then you can see the X and Y labels that they had here. In fact, on this web page, they have text boxes where they have them. Uh, and I am lazy, so I'm going to just copy and paste this instead of typing this myself. Always trying to avoid having to 
type if I can. Uh, one thing that you may notice on the y-axis is that the default distance here between the label and the axis line itself uh, is a little bit wider than you might want if you have integer values. I know I think I'd like this a little bit smaller, so a quick way to access this option is just to uh, right-click or control-click on the axis and you see a context menu that gives you a Y space option and go ahead and change that to narrow. I think that looks a little bit better. And the last thing, adding a legend. So if I go ahead and go up to the toolbar, I can add a legend command. A uh, couple of things. First of all, it's placing this legend in the top right hand corner. I'd actually like to uh, put this in the lower right. There it is. But it also isn't actually describing the data as I would like to describe it. It's using the title for my uh, Y data. And it actually also isn't repeating all my points. A data Graph has some logic built in that if you have the same exact data in a command, uh, it's not going to repeat it in the legend. So how do we get what we want in here? Well, we can go ahead and go to my commands and expand them out. And at the bottom, you'll see a legend name option. Delete that token and go ahead and type in um, what you would like for the legend entry. So this one I'll just call outside. Since it's outside of my significance region, I'm going to call the red points up since these are the upregulated points and we'll call the blue points down. You might want to also make the legend a little bit narrower. You can click the edge and just drag it interactively or change the size within the command itself. I'm sort of wrapping up this file. You'll notice that I put the masks columns into their own group. I also changed the background color. Uh, but there's one thing actually with the graph itself that as I was looking at this, I realized it was kind of bothering me. And I wonder if you look at this a little bit, if you might see what the issue is. Well, what it, what's bothering me is that the axis label enrichment is not centered under zero. It just feels like it should be. And it isn't centered under zero because I have a minimum and a maximum here that are not equal on either side. So I could actually include a number to set the axis region to expand it out on the left to make this equal. But actually, if I use a text command, I have an option of placing my axis label at a specific X location. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And this will be the last thing we do with this graph today. So if you go under label and add a text command, I'm going to go ahead and also drag this up to the top so it'll be right by my, where my X title is. So I'm going to actually take the X title out of the default axis settings, which is always going to be centered within my graph, and I'm going to put it now in this text command. And the text command itself has the option of being an X title. So I'm going to change the where menu to X title. And instead of uh, anchoring it at the center, I'm going to anchor it at a location, which is set to be zero. Now the right currently it's aligned to the uh, left alignment. So if I want it centered under zero, I can just say I want the align the block aligned to the center. And now I have an x-axis label that I think looks uh, much better for this graph. If you'd like a copy of this file, you can get it in our Data Graph online example files included with the program. Uh, this file now has the hover functionality where you can see the names of the genes, but something that's missing is actually having some labels. I'm going to do a follow-on video that talks about labeling these points and also ranking techniques. If there are other things that you might be interested in, in terms of how you might want to colorize the points differently or other aspects of a graph like this that you're interested in how you might create, then certainly let us know either in the comments or email us help at visualdatatools.com. Uh, I'd like actually to end this video the same way that I started it by showing you the eruption that I got to witness. Yes, this is footage that I took. Uh, back in 2021. This is on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland, and this was a pretty uh, amazing thing to get to see with your own eyes. This is an area in Iceland that remains very volcanically active. Um, many of you have probably seen that in the news. 
Um, so thank you for indulging me and letting you show this uh, video footage and apologize that my voice has been a little off in this video. I have been a bit sick, but I'm getting much better. And uh, hopefully next time I will sound like myself. So thank you so much. And uh, again, I hope this video was helpful to you. I think we actually covered a lot of ground. And uh, if it was, please go ahead and give us a like and of course, subscribe to our channel.